Hi, this is Jose Quesada for Data Science Retreat. I'm trying to continue this series on the parts of data science that is more strategic and is more related to, to business value and so on. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to prepare for a recession. In this case, the COVID-19 recession, right? So there are things that are super obvious and things that are maybe less obvious. So I'm going to cover them all as they came to my mind while preparing this, right? Okay, so first things first. You are in a recession, there is no way around it. You should know how deep the recession is going to be, right? And the truth is that nobody knows, right? So I'm going to make an assumption here that you need to prepare for at least six to 12 months of a job market that is not great. Now, everything that I'm going to say is informed by my experience and my conversations in Berlin, Germany, in Europe, basically, right? So in the US, it could be that things are completely different, and I cannot really tell you how, how the situation is right now. So take everything that I say on this video under that framework. I'm operating from the point of view of an European, right? Okay, so why is a job a market that is tough, right? So we're talking about job offers that are um, cancelled, even after they were signed. We're talking about job ads that are in a ghost town that you can apply to them, but you never hear back, right? And you never know what's really happening. The good news is that quite a few companies that are really affected are hiring again. So I'm hopeful. I'm talking about companies in the transportation industry, so um, it looks like, at least in Germany, things are starting to look okay. I mean, not great, but okay. And also from my experience, surprisingly, the, the average salaries of people hired is going up. But I can talk to you about this in a different video. Okay, so imagine that you are unemployed or you are in an industry that you know is not in a very good position right now. I'm going to talk about industries next, right? But, okay, this looks bad, right? Well, there are some advantages. For once, you know that you are in a position, you have to move, right? It's not like it's an option like, oh, maybe next year, maybe if I do something else. No, you have to move now. And you know that. If you know that, you are in a better position compared to those who, who are still like, well, you know, my industry is okay. I'm going to try to survive. I'm going to try to stay attached to my company that I know I don't like, but I'm going to keep going. It's better to have clarity on what you don't want. So you don't want to stay there, you must do something. This is a good place to be mentally, to be completely convinced that you have to do something, right? Okay, so then I will say pick an industry. And there is a ranking of industries that are going to do better than others during COVID times. So. This is my experience and from what I read, and I read a lot, um, tech is a safe place, healthcare is a wonderful place to be in, maybe you want to combine the two. <laughs> um, some parts of tech are better than others, like fintech and e-commerce, they could be doing well, right? There could be other things in tech that are getting cancellations, like anything related to communication, mm, it's going to be doing okay. But any uh, any app that a business pays for that is not completely necessary, maybe cut off. So things like calendars, to-do lists, and um, things that are really accessory, maybe not a great place to be. Okay, what are industries that are kind of stable but not really going up? Manufacturing or in the case of Germany, car manufacturing, right? Automotive. Automotive is an industry that it's really very strong. It's kind of the core of the country. It's hard to imagine that there is going to go up like faster than other industries, right? It's kind of going to stay there and be in a difficult situation, but not horrible. So from reading uh, annual reports, the ones that are released right now, mid-year, um, I gather the feeling that it's not horrible. Actually, it's quite okay in that industry. It's about 20% down, which is okay. Like manufacturing could have been much worse. Right? 
traditional education, like universities and so on, they are moving online, but they are kind of not doing super great. It is uh, stable, but not growing fast. The traditional education industry, right? The online education industry, though, watch out. This is something that is going to work really well, right? I will put it here up with tech. Now, industries that are a really bad place to be. Travel, hospitality, tourism, anything that has to do with flying around, with staying in, in uh, hotels and so on. Surprisingly, people are still going on vacation, but um, it's still not a good place to be, right? Okay, so now you pick an industry and what do you do? You have to really specialize and put a ridiculous amount of work for every application because not only do you have a tough market for at least six to 12 months, but you have also terrible, terrible competition because everybody knows that they're in a iffy situation so they want to do something about it. So pick a company that is not affected by COVID and where they have already made an investment in data science, it worked out for them. This is the place where you want to be in data science. You don't want to be in a place that is trying now, oh, maybe we want to hire some data scientists. We've never done that before because now budgets are tight. Everybody's focusing on reducing cost. And if you are a team that is doing something innovative, which data science teams often are, you are kind of in the path of... Um, possible cuts, let's put it this way. So you don't want that, you want a place that is already making a good revenue, a good a return of investment on the data scientists. Not that many companies are like that, but there are some. So this is why you have to research the hell out of every company that you're going to apply, make sure that they fulfill these two points, and then in your research, try to find something that is a pain point for the company and talk about that and try to propose a solution. No matter if the solution is not great and they go like, yeah, yeah, we thought of that. But the fact that you're offering that solution, that you understand their business to the point where you can offer solutions, this is very valuable to them. And it shows something in you that is very rare, which is a commercial awareness and some kind of business sense that is very valuable in a technology person like a data scientist. So for in my experience, it's super useful that you can demonstrate that you have that. If you offer them something, even if they already know what, what it is, it's good. It shows them that you have thought about their problems. And you're usually going to land in one of these two places, right? You're going to either increase revenue or reduce costs. From my experience, right now in a recession, it's easier or it's more survival to be in the reduced cost part of the equation because it's also easier to demonstrate that you, you have an effect, right? So increasing revenue, somebody will claim that they, they were behind the, the increases. And also it's probably not likely that you're going to get uh, stronger numbers than what you had in the past because of the recession. Reducing cost though is very tangible. You can go and pitch to your boss, okay, you know this cost, I'm going to make it smaller. And look at me, I did it. So this is very valuable, more so if you are starting out in a company as a data scientist, right? So I recommend you to stick to reducing costs and think about ideas you can pitch them about reducing costs. Okay, one last thing. Do you want to go for a big company or for a small company, right? During a recession, right? All these things are super general, right? Don't take this as gospel. Um, but when I was younger and applying for jobs, I had no idea about these things, and it's kind of important to, to make a conscious decision about where you want to go, right? Big companies, in those change happens slowly. So if you are impatient, if you need the company to adopt what you created, it's going to be harder in a big company. You also depend a lot on your surrounding team, more so because of politics, right? If your team is good, you can move forward if there is some tension or if there is somebody who is just not interested in doing much, then it's going to track down the entire team. Very important to, to know that when you go to a big company because sometimes you don't expect that. And this one is probably important in a recession. You can hide under the table. <laughs> you can hide away from your failures. There's a culture usually of covering your ass. I didn't know that and you should know that before you go into a big company. 
The good news is that there will be plenty of failure. There will be things that are tried during a recession to, to keep costs down or to increase revenues and they will fail. It's easier to fail in a big company that can take a 20% reduction in the revenue and still keep growing. In a small company, hmm, it's not that easy to do that, right? Okay, so what happens when you go to a small company? First, you have a huge responsibility. Anything that is happening on the website is your responsibility now. You probably have control over production servers, which is a scary thought, right? So if something can happen at any time, the server is down, the API you are behind of is down, you have to do something to make it work again because you're losing customers and this is hurting the business. Your successes and failures are going to be very apparent. You cannot hide away from your failure. Everybody will know that you are the person behind this. But that the, good, the upside to that is that you're going to be recognized by the things that you did well. There's no not that much room for politics. You're going to be the person who did that that saved the company. And this is a very good place to be, right? Now, if you are very concerned about losing a job that you just got, it is true that in small companies, the chances of the company folding during difficulties is higher. It's a tougher market. People are not buying things right now, right? If you are in a, in a small company, for just by definition, you are doing something more innovative, something that needs more faith from the customer to buy compared to a brand that is already there for years. This is something mm, curious, right? Still, don't be too concerned about small companies. I prefer them over big companies most of the times, depending on the industry. So the indus if the industry is great, you can be in either of those and be happy. If the industry is bad, it's very hard to be happy in a company that is doing bad. In a company that is doing great, you know, you can do things that are not great and still be recognized and still nothing happens, right? But if you do something nasty in a company that is in a market that is kind of uh, dwindling down, hmm, this could be the end of it. So you don't want to be there. Okay, so if, if you like this style of um, presentation, I don't know if I want to call this presentation, let me know in the comments. This is not something that you can find. It takes a lot of experience to do to, to things wrong to get to these things. This type of uh, wisdom type of videos or whiteboard sessions, I think is something that is missing right now. Tutorials for technical topics, not a problem to find them. This type of stuff is hard to find. If you want more of that, I will keep pushing it. It's really um, an effort for me to prepare these things. But if you like them, let me know. Also, if you really want to get deep on this thing and of course in technology topics, you can go as deep as you want consider doing the design retreat in Berlin or the online version. Okay, thank you.